Okay, Achyut and Ananya, are you able to hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm able to hear you. Achyut, what happened? Two weeks, long absence? Yeah, was I, visited, I was visiting my uncles. My uncle. It was very fun for me. And I could have attended class, though, like, uh, on the weekends, we were out and about because, like, my uncle had work in the weekday, so we just stayed home during that time. I but see. in the weekends, like, we were out, so, like, we couldn't, I would have attended virtually from there, but I hmm. couldn't. All right, so you're in the U.S. only, right? So are you, or have you come to India for vacation? Uh, not India. My okay. uncle lives in the Europe. All right, okay. Okay, so Ananya, I had to leave yesterday because uh, my family doctor had to visit and I had to receive him. That's why I got down abruptly yesterday. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay, so today the schedule uh, happened to have Mitra, Kirtana, Pratulia alongside uh, you both. But uh, Mitra has got, a, has got an exam tomorrow. She's studying. Pratulia has taken leave and Kirtana has taken leave. So that is the reason we three are alone meeting. So what we shall best do is uh, we will have our weekly presentation. It's been a long time since Achit has made a presentation. You have got a presentation or something handy with you? Yeah, Achit? yeah. Yeah. Ananya, you have one? Yes, I do, sir. Right, perfect. So we will have both of your presentations and then we will have some discussion and we will leave. And from next week onwards, we'll resume with proper attendance. Um, I uh, got one acquaintance yesterday. Uh, this uh, kid is living in New Jersey, and uh, he took flights last night to reach home. He's coming to India for vacation. His name is Abhinay. Um, I think he's getting to 11th grade from 10th grade, pretty much similar to Achyut. Abhinay, so he might also join. Uh, his parents are quite willing, but uh, I haven't heard anything from Abhinay. But once he reaches India, he is meeting me, and his parents are meeting me. So we will have a discussion, and then we will decide if all goes well. Specifically, if Abhinay is interested, only interested, he will also join this roster, and he will join alongside you both. So let's see. That's all for the next week. But right now, we have got this business. So Achit, you will start your presentation because Ananya has been presenting last week, the week before last, but it's been quite a while since you have made a presentation. So okay. we'll start with, come on. So like my presentation, it's not like a really in-depth topic, it's more a general topic. Of, so like I'm gonna talk, of, since I'm really interested in astronomy and stuff, I decided to talk about the Pluto, which is a, currently a dwarf planet, formerly a mm. planet. So, hmm. like, uh, you know what, everyone knows the planet and stuff, though. There's lots of stuff that are still pretty interesting about it that I even learned and were pretty interested that I like to, to share with it. So, Pluto, right now, it was uh, discovered in 1930 by Clyde Tomberg. It was discovered, uh, I believe, in the Lowell Observatory. And, like, uh, he, and like, at the first, it was, uh, he was able to track the orbit back then. Like it was very, he could have, it was like not even that visible, but like he was fa was very faint. And he had to use a very powerful telescope in order to detect the movements. And so like he did, so like it was at first, he considered it the ninth planet because like we just know it existed and it was able, and it was orbiting around the sun. Like it wasn't like any, we were able to distinguish it from any like comet or asteroid. So like we were able to see that it was orbiting and like uh, that, but like uh, as uh, we, as time advanced, like it was, became a major problem that Pluto was considered a planet because first it was very significantly a uh, less in size compared to like other and it's like, uh, by compared, it's even smaller than our own moon, which is uh, pretty telling for like something. And, and like uh, the bit, and like we just didn't know a lot of information of Pluto compared to others. Like, uh, like there is a mission set called the Voyager missions that the US sent in back in the 1970s. 
And like that was to mainly to explore the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Nep Uranus, and Neptune. And like they were the, uh, they were like the most far reaching uh, missions at the time. And like we were, and like they could have sent it to Pluto, the main one, the Voyager one, but like uh, it would have missed uh, a significant part of Saturn. So that's why they didn't send it. That otherwise we would have known Pluto then back then and we would have probably declassified it then because we did not know how Pluto was. Like even the Hubble Space Telescope back in 2002, it was all blur. The best picture we got of Pluto was blurry. Like no one knew what it was. Like some speculated ice, some speculated more of an asteroid. We didn't know, we didn't know anything. And so like um in 2006 it was a very telling year for Pluto because because first uh back in the for a long time we only thought Pluto was the only thing that uh, existed beyond one of the few objects that orbited some beyond Neptune and that is uh of a of a size that we can uh, that is significant. However, we started discovering other objects that were or it's like that were similar in size to Pluto and that were also orbiting Nep uh, beyond Neptune. So like uh, the, some of the objects were Haumea, Makimaki, and Eris. Eris was uh, at the time the measurements are based on the telescopes. It showed that Eris was actually about very slightly larger, about uh, about 24 kilometers larger than Pluto at the time, meaning that the uh, if Pluto was considered a dwarf, I mean, a planet, then Eris would also have to be considered. And it was a very uh, bad situation because like as more of these objects were discovered, uh, the, the scientists had to like, uh, they need to, they were, they don't want like more, many more planets. Like there's going to be like hundreds of different planets that were all class objects that were all classified as planets. So like uh, they had to change the rules a bit. So like they changed the rules in 2006 and uh, they added a, there was formerly before 2006, there's two, only two criteria for required for an object to be considered a planet. It has to be a large solid body that shines by reflecting sunlight and revolves in a stable orbit around the sun. That Pluto, Pluto has because it has an orbit in the sun and it can and it does reflect sunlight like uh, it has light coming from it and that's why we were able to see some pictures of it from earth and then has to be large enough that its own gravity has pulled it into a round shape and like it is a round shape pluto it's a very spherical shape and uh, yeah it is it covers that but the third one they added in 2006 it has to be, must be dominant enough to clear the area around it. That may sound a little vague, though, like, basically, the orbit needs to be stable and, like, needs to, like, make sure to, like, the or it shouldn't, like, uh, asteroids shouldn't, like, interfere it. Like, we don't, and, like, we don't know Pluto's complete orbit because, like, it, Pluto's orbit, it takes around over two 250 years and we only discovered it le less than 100 years back so like we didn't know much about Pluto's orbit it could be something else so it's like there's the debris we don't know the debris around it like uh, and it needs to be powerful enough to clear the for its gravity to deflect all asteroids like earth if you see round about there's not a lot of asteroids that impact it like Pluto we don't know anything so that's the third requirement and that demoted Pluto into a dwarf planet no and like it was a good thing because there's now thousands of trans-Neptunian objects or objects that orbit the sun beyond Neptune that's discovered and we would have had to classify a significant number of them as a planet so Pluto now is a Kuiper belt object which is Kuiper belt similar to the asteroid belt, which is in between Mars and Jupiter. The Kuiper belt is a belt of asteroids and rocks and stuff of ice that were around, that were orbiting beyond Neptune. So like, um, and then uh, Pluto, like we still didn't know a lot about it. Still, like all a, a lot of mysteries. Like we didn't have any clear image of Pluto, and we didn't have any mission. But 2006, the same year that Pluto became a dwarf planet. 
there's a mission called New Horizons that came. You know, so New Horizons uh, and launched in 2006, aimed at seeing Pluto. So like uh, it was one of the most ambitious missions. Like it was uh, targeted specifically towards Pluto. Or like it would have taken over nine years before it reaches Pluto. It made a quick stop at the Jupiter a year in 2007 to mainly to get a gravity assist. So like a gravity assist is using a planet's own gravity because it has a lot of force to fling the mission into it to an, towards another object. So like they use the they use this for include in a lot of missions before, including the Voyager missions. We talked about out in the 70s we talked about but new it would took uh it took uh nine years but uh 2015 we saw the first very clear images of pluto and like it showed a lot of a lot of uh terrain that was never seen before it was actually mostly rock and stuff many speculated it would be completely an icy body but no it's a rock and stuff it has a it's a lot similar to like uh Earth and other terrestrial planets rather than the gas giant incident. It was um it was pretty similar to the to more like a moon rather than a planet. That's like a had very similar stuff to to a Plu, to the moon to moon the composition. So for example, Pluto has a rocky core core and stuff. It has an interior that is actually actually like rocky rather than filled with gas like in that not like Jupiter and Saturn and like we also we knew previously Pluto had a moon named Charon but like uh, Charon had is about half Pluto size right? which is a uh, very interesting and it actually creates a binary si system because like Charon's gravity it's nearly half of a Pluto's mass it's nearly the ma half the mass of Pluto meaning it has its own and it has a significant gravity pull that kind of puts Pluto and Charon in a, or in about an orbit with each other. It's a little complex, though Pluto still is the more massive object and just Charon still mainly orbits around it, but Pluto also feels the gravity pulled by Charon. It's like Newton's third law, equal uh, for, every for every reaction, there's an opposite and equal reaction. For every action, there's an opposite reaction. So like, but like it depends on the mass, which is Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. And so like, um, since Pluto is more massive, it will face less force. That's basically the thing. It will face the less force than the acceleration or the movement of it than force. And then, um, some interesting facts about Pluto are finally, I want to say, Pluto's named after the Greek god of the underworld. Old. It was um it was um it was interesting because many of the planets like Jupiter and Mars and stuff, they were all named after Roman gods. And so Pluto, this is a very different one. And then uh, Pluto has five moons. So we talked about one of the moons, Charon. And then it also has Hydra Nix. Caribos and and Styx, those are all new moons. There's all moons of Pluto. And like Pluto, we told Eris was the largest in 2006. Now with Pluto, with accurate new accurate measurements, Pluto is actually the larger one than Eris. It is now 12 kilometers slow. Is there's bigger than year, not 12, of, about 40. Uh, 46 kilometers bigger than the Earth. It has a margin of error of 12. And then Pluto is one third water. It has lots of water. Pluto has more than three times the, the number of water than all of Earth's oceans. And then, uh, and then uh, Pluto has a very eccentric orbit, meaning more a lot of big oval shape of orbit. This is similar to like, this a uh, Earth's orbit by contrast is more circular and stuff. And then um, and then like we could have discovered Pluto nine nineteen fifteen. In nineteen fifteen, there's some astronomical observations, but 
using uh, the gravity of Uranus and Neptune, but no, but like uh, we didn't detect it. And it has an atmosphere, mostly consisted of nitrogen gas, as which is in the form of methane. In, and it uh, sometimes has an atmosphere, but similar to the moon, it's a very faint atmosphere. So like, uh, it's not uh, really that powerful in it. And that's it. Right. That was a brilliant presentation. Very, uh, you know, vast presentation as well on a voluminous basis. Good job, Ajit. I don't know, do you have any question with related to uh, Ajit's explanation about the myths of Pluto? Um, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, uh, good job on the presentation. It was really interesting. Um, uh, second of all, I just wanted to like, uh, like, know why like why you decided to make this presentation and basically why you're so interested in astronomy like uh what brought you to astronomy and why do you like it so much uh, Ajit, if you're speaking we are not hearing you Okay, so yeah, astronomy. Like I had like a, uh, okay, yeah, okay. Internet sets on the table. So like the astro, why I chose uh Pluto is mainly first to, to tied to astronomy and why am I, and like uh, my interest towards it. So my interest towards astronomy comes like the uh, I was. Uh, like I like the sci, I more like science. Uh, my two favorite subjects in school were mainly science and history. And like, uh, and while there's some, and like, uh, I like uh, combining though. And like, typically, I'm more interested in combining those subjects. And like astronomy, it goes a very vast time. Like it was the universe was 14 billion years. The solar system was 2006. And like, uh, even though like there's also scientific aspects of it. There's also some historical aspects with astronomy as well. At the time period, it's all a very different. Like I incorporated history in this presentation through like discovery of Pluto, the mission stuff. That's like, that's why. And like uh, that, I was able to do that. And why I chose, and like, uh, huh? and I did astro, and I was uh, doing astronomy in Sweden. And it's not a topic that's covered a lot in school and in where I live, like uh, we just talked about it briefly, like for one month, like mm. we didn't go like biology, like we've spent an entire year on it, but like, mm. and like yet astronomy, we didn't have, have that type of uh, thing, even though I feel like astronomy should be very much more so like, and it's just more, it's just a lot of stuff happening in astronomy that like, uh, and there's still a lot more unknown, which is like very interesting, like you like we probably are never going to know the hundred percent all the universe like uh, we may know more we're going to know like more biology more about mm. biology more about chemistry more mm. about physics than astronomy which is probably very interesting because all these new discoveries like and it's good and the second thing is like all the night sky it's very it's just cool like it's just see the stars like i looked the like it's a uh, good to point out all these constellations and then yeah Pluto. and then like the reason why i chose pluto is because um i actually i was actually looking for something that's more i didn't i want to be too complex with the topic like uh if i go to explain like galaxies or supernova and stuff there's a lot more like uh chemistry and physics required to knowledge in the knowledge of it but more inter things there's in the more solar system there's not as much and plus it is the uh, it there's a lot more information about it it that's the reason why okay right so the field of astronomy in itself has got the combination of both physics chemistry and all the core science concepts and uh, over the period of time in the past like if you take a statistics uh from 2000 nine or so uh, students have started taking astronomy as their major discipline of study 
But then why is it so difficult for uh, some students to finish astronomy? Uh, yeah, they've finished the graduation, but what happens is, uh, uh, I recently read an interesting article that only 62,000 people uh, all over in India, close to 70,000 people, have only got graduated in astronomy and they are working in the core area of astronomy. And that is a huge, huge imbalance. 70,000 is very, very less in number in contrasting to the number of people who have actually got admitted into the college for studying astronomy. Why do you think this happens? Why people uh, get graduated and they change the line of work? And why aren't they getting into their excellent domain for which they were actually prepared for in the college? In your opinion. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, so like uh, first though, even though like the space program in India and in other countries are in increasing over the years, like uh, mm. the space, like it's mainly mission-based. So like those mission-based, so like it's not based on like science and stuff. Like you may have a good grasp on astronomy, but like it's not uh, necessary to build the spacecraft to see how it moves. Mm through the solar system like it moves like you need to like have like uh you need to have like multiple types of engineers to build it like electrical engineers for signals mechanical for like to actually build the components and let it fly like, like it's more based on those those mm. types of engineers rather than it and like research and like mm. statistics and like other courses like uh, astronomy is a lot there's a lot of uh, like even though like uh, it will pay well though like it's just not like computer science is just becoming more and more prevalent in the mm. thing and like they choose computers and like uh, if they want like a they want like you have to undergrad astronomy like the I think like you need like uh, doctorate degrees like majority of the astronomers have doctorate degrees and work in like very high uni highly specialized universities that are mm. dedicated to astronomy. Mm. However, like computer science, you just need a bachelor degree. And like many people in the end of the, in the in the end, they just want to like have a good life and stuff. So they decide to like choose a viable option rather than continue to studies because college is stressful and like it is not good. And like they don't want to spend like years into it. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, that's a good line of presentation. I thoroughly enjoyed your presentation, uh, Achyut. Um, Thank you. Next week, when you are put into a presentation, like um, I'm just curious to know what kind of topic you would be taking next week. Probably something science or history related. Like I like, like uh, maybe not uh, this type of thing. Maybe be not astronomy like maybe like something closer to biology or or something okay. mm. right right Thing because okay. like it's really interesting all right okay fine so good job Hachit. um the next thing that is remaining in the platform of your attendance is you have to make a presentation using presentation aid Two weeks back, Ananya made a presentation by having a PowerPoint presentation with the presentation aid. And then gradually, we will have to move to a, a kind of a platform where you make a video presentation uh, where we would be able to check how is your body language and what are all the areas of improvement in your positive body language. And everything has to be assessed. So we will get on with that. But today, your presentation was really good and it was very lengthy. And I'm very happy about it. Normally, you do lengthy presentation. and um, as a, a public speaking trainer and as a, a person who is improving the communication skills of a person, you have a lot of energy in speaking about science and we are able to feel the vibrance when you speak about science because you blend the emotion and you also come up with the, uh, the self-assessment automatically happens. So whenever you sound, you are supposed to sound curious, you sound curious. And whenever you're supposed to sound excited, you sound excited and that's really good. So hope to see the improvement even more in the forthcoming days. Good job, Ajit. Thank you. All right, so now focus towards Ananya and Ananya is getting ready and your headphone is massive. 
uh, is that a gaming headphone or <laughs> that? Yes, it is. I see. Okay. Uh, right. It's so clear also. Yeah. Okay, Ananya, you can start your presentation. Okay. Um, can I present my screen? Yeah, one second. I'll approve it. Yeah, you're on. You can. All right. Um, okay. Can you see my screen? I am seeing your screen. What about okay. that shit? Achit, are you yeah, able to see? Ah, okay, Mars colonization, okay. fine. Yes. For a better view, I will switch off my video. So let Ananya's screen and Ananya's video be visible. Yes, Ananya, go for it. Okay. So, yeah. hello. My name is Ananya Srivatsan, and I will be presenting a um, visual and oral presentation on the proposal of the Mars colonization. So I'm also doing a presentation about one of the planets in our solar system. <laughs> Um, this idea of living on Mars has uh, became become the most biggest and most noticeable noticeable advocate for dozens of science fiction uh, sci sci fi based movies, TV series um, and documentaries and uncountable novels. So unmistakably, unmistakably, this is a huge uh, goal for many societies around the world. And this has been emphasized since the late around like the late 19th century. We have uh, NASA's Mars rover uh, permanently on the rocky surface of Mars, uh, and it's there to uh, collect images and remotely explore this red planet. But recently, the goal has shifted to landing a human on the surface of Mars. So here are a couple basic facts about uh, the planet of Mars. Its distance from the sun is uh, 142 million miles. Uh, its diameter is 4,220 miles, uh, which is significantly shorter than the diameter of Earth's, which is uh, 7,926. 7, the length of a day is 24 hours and 37 minutes, which is also uh, a bit longer than Earth's. And the length of a year there is double that of Earth's, a mind-boggling 687 Earth days. Uh, gravity is 0 0.375 that of Earth's, and the temperature is usually around uh, around like negative 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Mars also has two moons orbiting it. These moons are called uh, Phoebe and Deimos. So Mars is a small planet, and so it would take more than uh, six Mars to fill the volume of Earth. Therefore, is there even a lot we could do with this tiny rocky planet? According to NASA, exploring Mars provides the opportunity to possibly answer origin and evolution of life questions and could someday be a destination of survival of humankind. In addition, NASA states that this endeavor can also serve to inspire the next generation of explorers and expand human knowledge. And as you can see on the left, uh, it's, a, it's an image of a size comparison of Earth, Mars, and Earth's moon. Weather and climate conditions. So depending on what side of Mars you land on, extreme weather and climate, uh, they both are one thing, they both are something that remains constant, like all over, all over Mars, all over this planet. Similar to Earth, Mars does have seasons uh, due to the fact that Mars uh, has a tilt on its axis and it also has a higher elliptical orbit around the sun. While on Earth, most regions are able to experience all four seasons uh, and about four months of each season, uh, four months of summer, four months of spring, four months of winter, four months of fall. But uh, Mars's seasons, they extend for a longer period of time due to its um, longer years. Spring will last about seven months each year, summer about six months, uh, and a little more than five months of fall, and only about four months of winter. Due to uh, a sparse atmosphere, the sky and environment are almost always extremely hazy with uh, reddish iron-rich dust. This dust is what causes the reddish-orange skies. Often, this planet will have severe dust storms 
because of um, increasing prevailing winds. And so this is a huge concern that must be taken into account that um, that we need to take into account if we ever want to make a home on Mars. Um, yeah, unlike Mars, uh, um, sorry, unlike Earth, Mars has very a very, very thin atmosphere, uh, letting in a lot of sunlight from the sun. To visit the surface, you would need a sunscreen of an SPF of about a million. You would always have to wear protective gear to keep your body from uh, being exposed to these extreme uh, Martian radiation levels. The necessities. Uh, a couple of necessities that you would need to be able to retrieve from the surface of Mars uh, include food, water, and oxygen. To access food and water, you could, um, sorry, to access, to access food, you could either carry supplies for that period of time or um, eat that, uh, yeah, you could carry it for the entire time and eat that food, or you could grow your own food on the surface of Mars. Um, some vegetables, such as uh, potatoes and a couple more, these can be grown on the planet's surface due to the highly salty nature of the Martian soil. But the soil of Mars also contains many chemicals and toxins that are unhealthy for the human body and extremely dangerous. Uh, these chemicals can include per perchlorates and metals like lead and mercury, which cannot be digested by humans. Growing any food in these conditions uh, could easily cause disease or uh, stomach digesting issues, which will be difficult to treat, uh, especially um, so far away from Earth. Research has already shown that growing um, vegetables in space is not the brightest idea, since plants cannot properly adapt to the foreign, foreign objects in space, including uh, severe weather conditions and lack of moisture or sunlight. Hence, these plants are unable to establish the correct microbiome in order for them to try, for, in order for them to thrive. Maybe eventually we will be able to uh, develop a species of plants um, that can adapt to such extremeness, but for now that has not been the case. Another crucial aspect is water. This is the first thing astronauts and researchers will need to um, figure out when they reach Mars. The, I, the main idea would be to maybe like recycle the water from the atmosphere. Uh, otherwise, um, if it's possible that there is a source of water on the planet, then processing it and drinking the water will also be a good idea. Additionally, Water can also be used to extract oxygen that um, will be one of the other key factors to surviving on this planet. So the surface. Um, the surface of Mars has many landmarks, such as valleys and mountains, as well as ice caps around the poles. So um, whether it's for sightseeing purposes or research, resource gathering opportunities, um, if we begin exploration on Mars, these places will most probably be the first ones we visit. Um, for example, Olympus um, Mons is the tallest volcano in the solar system, reaching uh, 18 miles or 25, uh, 25 kilometers. Oh, sorry, 16 miles, not 18. Sorry, I misread it. Um, yeah, 16 miles above its surrounding plains. Researchers uh, say it's still active, therefore uh, it's, uh, quite a dangerous location, but still resource rich. Ballas uh, Mariners, on the other hand, is a giant system of valleys about the distance from Los Angeles to New York. This landmark resembles the Grand Canyon, so it would be a, it would probably be a, a popular sightseeing spot. The Viking landers and Mars's tremendous polar ice caps uh, also get um, dry ice snowfall, uh, at certain times during the year, and these, I assume, would also be great places to collect materials and resources, especially for uh, gathering uh, water. On the topic of where to live on the surface of Mars, this is a different conversation in and of itself. With such uh, harsh climatic conditions and the uh, dusty winds and higher radiation levels, it is important to find a safe place to live. And that place um, 
on Mars would be underground. The living conditions on the surface aren't good enough for a peaceful stay. So the ideal situation would probably uh, be to have a proper place under the surface. This will help in a lot of things such as uh, reducing radiation exposures to the humans, um, storms, cold temperatures, and many other problems that you would uncover while exploring the planet. An underground bunker would be the most beneficial, and maybe these bunkers can be built in a way where, uh, the, where they could uh, provide the comfortable air pressure our body needs. So you can practically open your suit inside your home. At the same time, when you go for when you go out just to like continue exploring the planet, you would need to wear proper suits that can help protect you from radiation. Although, so there isn't exactly like 100% uh, a structure that can be made on the surface of Mars that can um, prevent radiation that well. But uh, researchers say that having robots or drones do the work for you will be a good idea. Another important thing one needs to consider is uh, how you will travel around. For that, we need to design uh, mobility vehicles for Mars specifically. The area on the planet very, uh, it vastly differentiates from area to area. So it would be necessary that the vehicles can work properly everywhere, like around all the places in Mars. On the right are a couple of images depicting the surface of Mars. To the top right, on the top right is one of uh, Chrism's final, final maps of Mars. On the bottom right is the Olympus Mons as viewed from, from space. And finally to the left is Vallis Mariners. Okay, and here are the links to the online articles and sources that I've used in this presentation, and all, all images are from NASA. Yes, so that concludes my presentation of A Life on Mars. Uh, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed listening, and like, are there any questions? Right. I like the way the presentation has been designed. The PPT was really nice, and uh, you made it free dot com and uh, the graphics and all that you've got a wonderful way of uh, preparing the presentation slides Ananya very nice very nice thank you yeah my question yeah before I go to my question uh, Achut you must be having something to interact with Ananya as far as this Mars presentation is concerned do you have any questions yes Voice glitch. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 A very nice presentation. And then, uh, and then, like, uh, my question is like, if you would have to go to Mars, would you, uh, if you had the offer to go to Mars, would you, based on the information you collected? I'm not too interested in astronomy like you. So I've never really thought about like, if I would go out into space and do all the physical work. So to answer your question, no, I don't think I would um, want to be like landing on Mars and doing this. I would probably, I would maybe research it down in earth, like um, control the mission maybe if I'm lucky, uh, but I don't think I'd ever want to uh, go out into space maybe and do uh, like, do the researching like that mm, okay my question is uh, if hypothetically speaking if there are people living in mars and if they look into the another planet earth and with the kind of devastating kind of development that we have made in the name of technology and in the made of artificial intelligence and in the name of artificial intelligence what would be the population of mars speaking about the masses of the earth so just give me an imaginary answer. And if, if you are living in Earth and you have got people living in Mars, accustoming and adjusting to the kind of situations and the conditions that you have explained in this presentation, if they have a look into Earth as a planet and if they come across what, are, what is going on in Earth, what would be the criticism or what would be the critic exp expression from their side? What would they say? Uh, if they've been alive as long as uh, Earth has been alive, I think there would be a lot of cr criticism. Like we've done lots of um, wrong things. 
And what I think they would say is something around like, we had so many like resources, but we wasted them all and now we're wanting more. But so we're trying to expand and they would, um, I would think they would probably be against it, which is also why uh, extraterrestrial life wouldn't be the best for us, as mm. I explained in a past presentation. Mm. So, yes, the their answer would not be very um, nice to us, I'd say. Nice. All right. So my next question is uh, when uh, these many resources are tangibly, uh, you know, available and uh, with the kind of research that you have made and you have made a lot of things explained and if Mars is so much sophisticated and uh, kind of it is it is basically a place where living is not impossible if that is the case why do you think people have not explored the ideas of making uh, human rays traveling to that place and making some adventures possible why haven't they been so slow in this progress? Wait, so why haven't they been uh, so slow in the process of colonizing, do you mean? Yeah, right. Oh, I think it's because of uh, technological issues. Like we, uh, for the past few like um, decades, centuries, like progress has been slow for humanity. Mm -hmm. Like we, just made electric cars like recently and so like technology it, it'll be it, it's kind of like an exponential function mm. like it started off slow but it'll zoom up eventually and mm. we're kind of living that right now I so see. it um i think we should expect to see a lot of space exploration soon mm. but yeah that's i suppose that's why they haven't been doing so in the past okay okay now, your last week's presentation and this week's presentation, when you put that into, put the couple of presentations in the past and the current presentation that you have made, uh, how much mark you will be giving your own self in today's presentation out of 100 and why? Out of 100, I would probably give myself around a uh, 95, 95 to 96. Mm. I think I did well, but there's, uh, I could have improved the length, I could have made my wording better and just spend more time talking about the topics instead of rushing through, because I feel like I kind of rushed through it a bit today. Right. Okay. Fine. Good job, Hananya. Nice presentation today. And uh, I only wish the other people could have attended your presentation because they could have got, they would have seen it a little inspirational. And uh, I really appreciate it. Well done. Nice. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> it's been a long time since both you and Achyut have joined and let us do some evaluation. What I'm going to share on the screen is uh, something called as the credit rating system. And the credit rating system is something that I consider very valuable. Yeah, that is it. So, as you could see, the credit rating system has got uh, these criteria. That is, uh, I would like to explain the criteria first of all for both of your knowledge. I see attendance, leadership meter, uh, progressive uh, maintenance of your communication skills, positive body language, positive mindset, uh, how much books you are reading during this teenage phase and uh, what are the self-development habits you are having now right now mind exercises i haven't exposed both of you either of you into mind exercises thus far because we are meeting very very limited time like only in the weekends anti-phone day when i say anti-phone day if a student is taking up uh, a time where he or she is not even exposed to any screen that's called as anti-phone day which is relatively impossible but they get good scores in the credit rating system for this good bonus, I should say. Presentation skills, humanity meter, like how much you appreciate a student when he or she makes a presentation, how much you are uh, uh, friendly with a person when he or she is behaving or performing in the class. Knowledge and wisdom meter, so how much knowledge you are having. So that's where both you and uh, 
both Anani and Achyuth are going to score vigorously because you've got a lot of science knowledge. Prioritizing ability, like how much you prioritize. If a task has been given in the session, uh, and if the trainer is trying to test your leadership skills, how how much you are prioritizing? You know, I remember in the last batch, uh, in the last US batch, which had almost about 12 or 13 people in the US batch, uh, where Ananya's good friend Kiran was also part of, um, we had lots of people scoring very low uh, in this prioritizing ability. And in fact, they were penalized. There is a separate col column called as penalty also. So they were penalized for not being able to prioritize which has to be done first, which has to be uh, put into this as last. Likewise, the 14th one is plan implementation and the final one is physical agility. Okay, so the abbreviation reads like that, like as you could see here, it goes on attendance lead. So these are all the short forms of all the criteria that you have to see. So far, this is the mark, like, I had given, um, I think uh, the last time I updated it was uh, for both of you, it was uh, on July 15th or so, July 15th or 17th. So Achyut, um, leadership three, self-development two, presentation skills three, knowledge meter two, plan implementation one, and uh, trainer bonus four. So this, uh, has been the formula for both of you because by that time when I was giving the mark, the presentations were very, very less. But right now, a bunch of presentations have been made specifically by Ananya because Hachit's attendance model is uh, only once in a week. So I cannot give any mark for attendance because both of you are in two different models. So it will be unfair if I give marks for the attendance. Let's see as far as Hachit uh, is concerned, the leadership. From three, we shall make it as 11 because uh, he has been very good in terms of preparing. And when he's making a presentation uh, um, in his liking, he is really raring to go for making the presentation. And there is a lot of spirit in the way he speaks. As far as leadership is concerned for Ananya, we shall give about 13. The very reason why Ananya is two marks a little higher than Achyut is Ananya attends more number of classes than Achyut. So that gives the trainer more room for evaluation. Uh, uh, when she is behaving or when she is uh, performing, um, behaving into a role in a particular activity or performing in a task, uh, when she gets along with people like Mitra, Pratulia, Kirtana, Sudan Kartik, uh, or Avantika for that matter, so she accustoms really well. So that's why the leadership mark has been given 13. Well, the progress. As far as progress is concerned, uh, I was just appreciating both of you. So both of you get about an eight in progress. Positive body language. I haven't seen Achyut thus far, uh, but I have seen Ananya in all the presentations she has made. And uh, Ananya should be given 10 uh, points for the positive body language that she's making. When she's making a presentation, see, she has got that warmth and she has got that relaxed state of speaking. And when she is trying to speak to her friends, when friends are uh, appreciating her, the way she thanks everything. So this is the first time she's getting off the mark in terms of the PBL factor, 10 marks. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'll have to see Achyut the way, the tonality that he uses. Uh, I leave the choice up to him. Maybe next week or so, if he's willing to give a video presentation well it's more most welcome but again the choice is with the student himself but with the kind of the tonality and the positivity that she's i mean that achit is carrying uh, in the way he speaks has to be merited and uh, achit can be given about eight marks in the positive body language well positive mindset yeah so this is very important for me like when a presentation is not being made or when a presentation is being made or when the trainer comes up with a creative activity, you know me, I always come up with creative games and creative activities just to make sure that it is definitely completely away from the academics and uh, you are in vacation and that has to have a meaning to be in vacation because uh, activity-based learning, every teenager loves. But whatever it may be, if the trainer is able to explain things on a clearer basis, people have to uh, understand. But even if you don't understand, sometimes the activity might be not so much 
that you like, but still you perform well. So that is where the positive mindset lies. On that note, I can give both of you about eight. Books reading, well, that can wait because obviously that, that book reading criteria has been brought specifically for the Indian batch people because they hardly read any books. They dwell their heads into the textbooks. So that's why, but you both have the reading habit. So a couple of more classes, let them go. And then we'll speak about book reading. Self-development can be raised for both of you, can be raised to nine. Mind exercises, well, we will have to speak about any specific cases. You know, just all of a sudden, I cannot put any of you into any therapies. Like if you come across any uh, disturbances or if you come across any challenges in your school or in your life or in your personal regime, then only then the mind exercises come. But apart from that, regular mind exercises uh, that I suggest for the teenagers are always in force. But only if you're interested, that should be given. So ask and you will receive it. So let's see when you are asking for it. And uh, when you're asking for it, I'd be able to give you the video, watching which you can take notes and you can act accordingly. So that column can wait. Presentation skill, yeah. The blue chip thing that we need to discuss as far as both of your cases. Achit's presentation has got agility and uh, it has got good vocabulary connotation and the modulation is really nice. Statement and sentence formation is really too good as far as Achit, Achit is concerned. Remember, uh, speaking about science needs a lot of expressive way of searching for vocabulary. It doesn't come that effortlessly. So he does it very effortlessly. Uh, this as a trainer, I only can explain to Achyut. Nobody else will uh, have time and will have willingness to express. Even as school teachers, I, I, I don't think they will hardly, they will have time to speak about all this, but uh, he's a very good presenter. So 13 can be given for Achyut for the presentation. Ananya has been making a lot of presentation with the presentation aid, like a couple of PPT presentations and the efforts that she has put is really good. So for that, it has to be appreciated. And I think this is a third PowerPoint presentation. And uh, the girls have also enjoyed Ananya's presentation whenever she, because she makes a slide look even more, anybody can make a slide presentation, but understanding from the listener and audience perspective, which slide will be, really catchy uh, she knows that and she tries to bring up a lot of design into that so 17 for ananya into that humanity meter okay right um as far as the interpersonal effectiveness like how you speak to your classmates here how you respond to your classmates here and uh, how do you appreciate you know the sense of appreciation when somebody does really well just calling the person and uh, telling them straight on face that something of the sort has been so good, you really did well. I haven't seen that kind of uh, attitude in both of you because uh, um, you had been thanking for the appreciation, but yeah, you had been saying that, yeah, it was a good presentation. But uh, here, what I expect is if you have something to be communicated to the people, your classmates, you got to literally take up that headphone and you need to call the person and you need to address that. So I expect that because that's a very good leadership trait because a leader, a good leader looks into the eyes of the person and gives constructive appreciation in public and uh, gives constructive criticism in private and both should be done in eye to eye. So maybe in the forthcoming classes, you both will be mastering this particular skill. So humanitarian meter can wait. Huh. Knowledge meter, science. for whatever you have appreciated the other people and the heart should be given some mark for, for knowledge meter. Well, both of you have got a lot of voluminous knowledge about science and interest about science. Specifically, Achita has got more affinity towards astronomical elements and uh, Ananya might not be so much of an aspiring, uh, aspiring person into astronomy, but she also has a lot of scientific knowledge. So in the presentation that is reflecting. So for Achyut, we shall give about 12 and for Ananya, we shall give about 11. Prioritizing ability. Well, I would like to appreciate both of you because not too many times you people have missed your presentation. So you have prioritized the presentation and you have understood the value of attending every single week's class. So I should really value that. So for that, I would like to give 
10 marks each. Plan implementation. Well, planning, charting out the presentation points, jotting them down, and deciding which has to be explained first, which has to be explained last, and you know, giving a giving a proper structure and construction, and sequentially arranging the points and speaking, that has been really good in both of your cases. So Achyut has 12 in it, and Ananya has got 15 in it. Physical agility. Well, physical agility, I give marks for those people who really, you know, involve into physical games in MS evening sessions. Unfortunately, we haven't got any physical game opportunity when you both joined. So maybe in the forthcoming classes, we shall see. That can wait. Trainer bonus. Well, for Achyut, the bonus is 18 and so is the number for Ananya too. And this is the penalty column. And uh, we don't have any penalty. So this particular column is inclusive of penalty and grand total, how much you have done. So we will arrive at a formula. Maybe after the class is over, I will arrive at a formula and consult it. So Achyut stands tall with 113, and uh, Ananya stands tall with 123. And this one is updated on July 31st. So, uh, if you'd like to know about your colleagues, I know Mitra is with 397. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Kirtana is with 370. Brinda is frozen. I mean, there is another girl called Brinda. So, Kirtana's sister, her score is frozen and she stands with 284 and Dakshin Siddharth, Kiran's uh, cousin. Uh, well, ever since the CRS started, he attended only one class and in that one class he scored only seven. Pratulia, Ananya's contemporary, she has got a penalty here. If you see, Kirtana and Pratulia have got penalty. I gave a severe penalty to Pratulia because one day uh, her mom called in the last minute and she said, we are taking Pratulia to a movie and therefore we can't attend the class. These things I don't encourage. And that's why it was actually 35, but Pratulia made a very good presentation two or three days back. So I brought it down to 28. Kirtana also, you know, she uh, went somewhere. She easily catches up uh, some virus and she always falls sick. She is not taking care of herself and she uh, got absent to a couple of classes. So penalty 27. So Kirtana 370 after penalty. This girl, Pratulia, 2.30 after penalty. And then we have Susan Karthi. Uh, is, uh, again, Susan Karthi will also be penalized because he did not attend this week also. So without penalty, Achit 1.13 and Ananya 1.23. Right, so it is your righteousness to ask for any clarification. So Achit and Ananya, do you have any questions or kind of uh, clarifications about your credit rating system marks? Not as, um, not like not right now. All right. Okay. I'll uh, I'll let it I'll let it play out a bit before like I and I ask anything. Uh, I didn't get you. Can you repeat, please? Oh, uh, I'll let it like uh, I'll uh, not for now. Like I don't I, I don't I really see. have any problem with it. I'll tell it. Right. I'll tell but, if it has later. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so good score uh, as of now. Achyut has got almost about five classes in his attendance and Aranya has got about uh, 11 classes in her attendance. So 113 in five classes and 123 in 11 classes, it's a good number, so let's see. Okay, so that's about CRS. Every week it gets updated, but today is the first day I'm seeing both of you in person. Uh, without the other people joining. So that is why I took the liberty to give your progress. Each week after your presentation, it will get updated. What best we can do is each week, once the class is over, we will update your CRS. And uh, that will be motivating and also it will make you understand where you actually stand. Right. Okay. So Ananya, what's going to be your presentation genre next week? 
I haven't fully planned it yet, but <clears throat> um, I might switch up the topic a bit and switch from uh, maybe science to literature. Mm -hmm. So I might like uh, express, like uh, make a presentation about the genres of literature, such as uh, mm -hmm. horror, comedy, mystery, like, and how they can uh, like progress us and like how they can affect our mm -hmm. uh, society how mm. literature can affect our society. Okay, having said that and having heard that from both of you, I have an idea to, you know, maybe you both can work, Achit can work, and he has got time till Sunday, and Ananya, you have got time till the next Saturday. Like, uh, come up with a story, uh, come up with a, a real storyboard. The activity's name itself is a storyboard, and uh, you make up a character. Everything should be, uh, everything should be taken right from the soil. The, right from the character's name and the, the, the character's character, in-person character and uh, the behavior mode of the person and come up with a genre. Maybe you can include humor, you can include a thrill, you can include a, um, spooky things, whatever it may be. But eventually, while they, at the end of the story, it has to carry a message. So that can be related to science as well. So if Achyut is thinking something about science and he can bring up, instead of just making a placid presentation about uh, the uh, science, bringing up a story will also be good. So can you both make it? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a question. How long does the story need to be? Like, is it a short story or like a couple of no. pages? You, you can take your own time because you see, you both are attending only two classes while the other people are attending four classes per week. So um, more chunk of time will be given to you both. Uh, and Achyut is attending only one class in a week. So you can take as much time as you want because when it is a story, it has to be really narrated properly. And based on the story, the other people will listen to the story and they will ask questions and you can ask questions to them as well. What is your inference on this character? What is your inference on this character? Likewise, it will be a wonderful platform for testing your creativity. Okay, sir. All right. Yeah. Achit, do you have any problem with that? Can you make it next Sunday? Yeah. All right. Okay. Fine. So you have any questions, both of you, before we wrap up things here? No, sir. All right. Okay. Oh, wait. Actually, um, I think we might be going on vacation um, starting around like maybe Wednesday or Thursday in the coming week, and we'll be back by, um, I think, Saturday or Sunday. So I'm not sure if I can attend the, I can attend the, um, the class. morning class for Saturday. Yeah. I'll have to ask my parents. I'll see. All right. Okay. So how about Sunday? Um, I, th I think I'll be able to make it. I'll still check though. Fine. No problem. So can you mail me or just, just put a WhatsApp message through your dad's phone because that's the only thing that I've got as an access. Whatever things communicate, we both communicate with your, using your dad's number. So once you decide, why don't you put a text through your dad's number so that I can mark and I can plan accordingly. Okay. Sure, sir. Right, so fine. So try to make it maybe right now when I'm making a weekly plan tomorrow morning, that is Monday morning, I will freeze the dates that you are not going to be attending on Saturday evening, that is our Saturday evening, but I will still uh, mark it as present on Sunday morning. But at the worst case, if you're not able to attend Sunday, please let me know uh, one day, at least a little in advance so that I can plan accordingly. Okay, sir. All right, Hachit, do you have any other programs or uh, you're free on Sunday to make it to the class? Yeah, next Sunday, I am free. When is your school starting? Ananya said the school starts for her uh, August 2nd week or so. When is yours? Uh, it's the end of August. End of August, right. That's lucky. Okay, fine. All right, Hachit and Ananya. It's been a wonderful joy of interaction and learning. I learned a lot about uh, Pluto from Achyut and I learned a lot about Mars from Ananya. It has been a wonderful coincidental science fiction learning today. Thank you so much. So we'll meet in the next weekend. And in case of any mind exercises, and if you're ready for the routine of mind exercises, not during the vacation, I don't want to bug you during the vacation. Maybe once a school tenure uh, starts, you need a good level of uh, psychological therapies for keeping you always on the roll. Let me know if you're in need of something of that sort. 
right okay expect great things and live strong we'll meet next week bye bye achieve and ananya bye sir bye sir thank you thank you bye bye